Folks, I can't even begin to describe the news that I have, uh, so I'm just going to say it. Cori Bush just won her primary. She defeated an incumbent, Lacey Clay, whose family has been in office for 50 years. She beat him. It was a narrow victory, but nonetheless, she's going to be going to Congress. This is a blue district. She will be another member of the squad, and I I'm honestly like, I'm speechless right now. This is such a huge, colossal victory for the left, I can't even begin to describe it. This is someone who is going to be an advocate for Medicare for All, an advocate for defunding the police, an advocate for the people, and she's actually going to represent that district adequately. Uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words right now because this is such good news. It almost seems like it's unfathomable in 2020 with how much bad news we've been getting. But this goes to show you that the left is, in fact, rising. Cori Bush just won. I don't know what to say. I don't even know what to say. I'm genuinely excited about this. One of the best candidates running for Congress. If many of you remember, she actually ran for Congress back in 2018 but was defeated. Uh, she then kept putting in work, putting in the effort and time, canvassing in that district. She never stopped, and it paid off. And I can't believe this. Last year, after the Knock Down the House documentary aired on Netflix, I brought her, Amy Valella, and Paula Jean Swearingen on my program, and out of all of them, two of them decided to run for Congress again, and 100% of them have won their primaries. I don't, I can't process this. Like, what is happening right now? It seems like we're winning. This is what winning feels like. Okay, okay, that's, that's a good feeling. Um, I'm going to hang on to this. Because uh, if you're a left winger, you don't get to feel this very often. But she is almost certainly going to be a member of Congress now. Because she's winning this district. This was a deeply blue district. And really, the primary was everything. Man. A grassroots candidate who ran unapologetically as a progressive. She just beat a political dynasty. There are no words to uh, really describe what I'm feeling currently. Um, I have chills, you know, uh, down the back of my neck. Like, this This feels like a dream. Cori Bush will be in Congress. Wow. Wow. Now... Um, the good news doesn't stop there, but before we get to that, I'm going to get to some bad news. I'm going to talk about the losses because there were other elections, and um, I want to end on a more positive note. So Washington State also held their primaries today, and we got quite a bit of uh, bad news out of Washington State, but not entirely. So Pramila Jayapal, of course, won her primary. Overwhelmingly, it wasn't even close. She's definitely someone who I want to see back in Congress. But there were a number of progressives who were running that um, unfortunately didn't make it. Um, so I was really, really rooting for Jason Call and Rebecca Parson. And uh, unfortunately, both of them lost their primaries. So let's get to some specifics here. According to the Seattle Times, Jason Call lost. He received 12% of the vote to Timothy Hazelow's 14%. And Rick Larson, the incumbent, has 52%. Although at the time I record this, I will say that Jason Call is really close. And we're going to wait on mail-in ballots to officially call this election because this is a top two election. So this isn't just where, you know, one Democrat and one Republican make it to the general. It's super close. He's down by a little more than 2,000 votes. He could still technically pull this off. And if he pulled this off, Jason Call would be a phenomenal person to be in Congress. But, you know, this would be a difficult um a difficult race to win if he made it to the general with Rick Larson. Um, so we'll watch this race. We'll kind of stick a pin in this and come back to it. But for now, it doesn't look great. But, you know, hold out hope. Not all hope is lost just yet. When it comes to the 5th Congressional District of Washington, I actually interviewed Chris Armitage on the program. But a few weeks ago, he inexplicably exited the race suspended his campaign um, after he reports that he was experiencing, you know, a lot of mental stress and, you know, allegations of misconduct had come up. So he exited the race. So unsurprisingly, he lost. But, um, you know, this uh, 
Looks like Kathy McMorris Rogers is poised to win, although we'll see if Dave Wilson can pull it off. I admit I'm not familiar with this politics, um, but um, we'll see. In District 6 of Washington, Derek Kilmer and Elizabeth Kreiselmeyer have made it into the top two. Rebecca Parson finished in third, and it looks like she has a lot of ground to make up if she's going to make it into the top two, and it doesn't look like she uh, is going to be able to pull this off, unfortunately. Phenomenal candidate, uh, LGBTQ Democratic Socialist, uh, checks all the boxes if you're a lefty. Um, So I'm really... I'm really disappointed about this one because Rebecca Parson is, you know, she's someone I was watching, but, you know, she's certainly, she's going to be back. She is a force in politics. Um, And when it comes to District 10, the district formerly held by Denny Heck, he, you know, announced that he is uh, not going to be running for re-election. Turns out he was running for a different position, I believe Attorney General, I'm not sure. And approximately 10,000 people chose to run in this district. Originally, Joshua Collins, um, as you can see towards the bottom there, running running an EW, the Essential Workers Party. I mean, he got trounced. A lot of voters uh, apparently felt betrayed because he said he was running as a Democrat, but then decided to run as an Essential Workers Party, basically creating his own banner. And I'm not necessarily sure. It seemed like there were a lot of names jumping in that were more well-funded. So, you know, the race got tough for him. But I will say overall that even if the candidate who I initially supported didn't make it in, I still am relatively happy with the results because Beth Doglio made it into the top two. And she has been consistently shifting to the left. You know, she used to take corporate PAC money. She is no longer doing that. She is now unequivocally endorsing Medicare for All. On top of that, she was endorsed by Bernie Sanders and Pramila Jayapal. So, you know, I'm going to be rooting for her, although based on these results, it seems as if she has quite a bit of, you know, room to make up in terms of uh, beating Marilyn Strickland, who I do not support. She's actually someone who's not impressive at all. She doesn't support Medicare for All. She's one of those Democrats who say they support quote-unquote access, but of course she'll tell you she thinks it's a right. Um, But, you know, maybe with everyone else out of the race and support consolidated, hopefully Beth Doglia will have a chance. If she were to win, she's absolutely, like, without question, an improvement over Denny Heck. So, you know, not all is lost with this race, but, um, you know, it's just a different result than we initially had hoped for or expected. And, you know, it's not too bad. I'll, I'll take Beth Doglia. I think she's pretty She's pretty solid. Now, Arizona also held their Democratic Party primaries today as well, and I was rooting for Eva Putsova in the 1st Congressional District. She was running against Tom O'Halloran, who is the incumbent. He's a corporate Democrat, and we don't actually have all of the results at the time I record this. With 45% of precincts reporting, she is trailing him, albeit by not too much, but she has quite a bit of votes to make up. Tom O'Halloran is in the lead with 56.6% of the vote, and Eva Putsavai has 43.4%. So at this point in time, with that much precincts reporting, it's a sizable number, but there's still more. It's not looking great. Although if there is any developments, if she ends up winning, I will update you in the comments. So if you're on our YouTube channel watching it there, be sure to check um, because this is definitely another really phenomenal candidate. She's also someone that I brought on the program, was really impressed by her. Now, I want to talk about the third congressional district of Missouri. This is a seat that's interesting because um, we're rooting for the incumbent in this instance, Rashida Tlaib. So she actually had a pretty strong primary challenger. I mean, polls didn't necessarily show that she was in danger, but her primary challenger was raising a lot of money. We all know that since Rashida Tlaib ruffles a lot of feathers, you know, Democrats wanted to take this opportunity to kick her out in favor of someone else who would, you know, not rock the boat and go along with the establishment. Thankfully, we can all breathe easier because Rashida Tlaib has won. She won her primary uh, and she's making it back to Congress. So in uh, the next congressional session, we're going to see Congresswoman Cori Bush serve alongside Rashida Tlaib. Unbelievable. And on top of that, Jamal Bowman, Mondaire Jones will be there. And we may see Kara Eastman, Paula Jean Swearingen. We have really made a lot of strides um, in this election cycle. We lost the Democratic presidential primary, but in terms of what we're doing in these House races and in local races, 
I mean, socialists and progressives are really doing a great job. Like, we're unseating incumbents left and right. Like, it's a different game now. And if we're doing this good, if we made that big of an improvement since 2018, imagine how good we'll do in upcoming midterms. So this is such a good sign. Um, again, the biggest shock is Cory Bush making it in. Again, uh, don't count out Jason Call yet. Um, we'll wait and see. I hope that maybe the results will change if mail-in ballots come in. But he's so close that I still feel optimistic even if he loses because if he doesn't pull this off, I have no doubt in my mind that he'll be back and win. Um, but really, I want everyone to just take a moment to soak in this accomplishment. Cori Bush is going to be a member of Congress. And she is someone who I absolutely can rely on, who we all can rely on. This truly is, um, it's so remarkable. And what she managed to do in defeating a family that's held that seat, being progressive, favoring Medicare for all, it's just, it's astonishing. Uh, congratulations to Cori Bush on this well-earned victory. Um, she worked so hard for this. Her staff have been working immediately since she lost in 2018 like as soon as they got the results they picked up the pens they picked up the phones they started organizing immediately after for this victory so you know Cori Bush did a great job but her team they also carried through uh this victory um carried her to victory I just I don't even know what to say this is big you know you 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 know <laughs> you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man. man.